Hi, Instructure Khan attendees. Welcome to this video about feedback fruits and about creating lasting engagement in Canvas. My name is Max de Graaf, and I'll be your host today, uh, where we're looking at two use cases from Cornell University and East, Eastern Nazarene College, how they've implemented feedback fruits to create, create exactly that. Now, I'm first going to show you a bit of an overview of feedback fruits, then the two use cases from Cornell University and Eastern Nazarene College, and after that, some closing remarks. Now, feedback fruits have been around since 2012, and we have an all in one Canvas integrated tool suite. And with the mindset of pedagogy first and technology only second, we've created an LMS tool suite that integrates deeply into Canvas for your instructors to use. This is what we want to move away from, traditional course design with articles to read and lectures to attend. We understand that nobody has these type of courses anymore, but this is in essence why we started with Feedback Fruit, because the student engagement that comes with doesn't reflect learning. But by adding pedagogical innovation, we can replace those non-engaging student activities with the engaging active learning designs that come with implementing different modalities of learning. Student engagement over time, increasing student success and the end student retention. So what is Feedback Fruits? Feedback Fruits LMS tools add a pedagogical layer over courses for instructors to use within Canvas, entirely intuitive and fully integrated. The tools are designed for all course sizes and modalities, providing an inclusive learning experience for all students. When we open up the basket, you see that we have a range of tools and those tools can in essence be scoped in three different buckets. One is around feedback and assessment, where Cornell University will share their experiences. The second is around collaborative learning and student discussion, all about student engagement, student interaction, but also faculty interaction with students, and around synchronous learning activities, because we shouldn't forget those in-class student activities. Just a little bit of a look and feel. This is what you see on the left side is a student interface of our solution entirely within the iframe. It's on peer review. On the right side, you see group memory evaluations all around the collaboration process between students. Here you see interactive video, faculty learner materials, with in-video quizzing and a social discussion thread around it, and our discussion assignment tool on the right. I completely understand that this doesn't mean a lot at this point, but I want you to take away is that we're fully integrated and the interface between the solutions is similar, meaning that the adoption can be relatively quick. With that being said, I would like to hand it over to Xenia. Xenia, thank you so much. And if you want to take away how Cornell University has implemented feedback fruits in terms of self and peer assessment, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I will be presenting on behalf of uh, the Center for Teaching Innovation at Cornell University. Our center is located centrally, which means that we serve multiple colleges. And in working with different instructors with different needs, we've noticed that we were approached by multiple instructors asking for different ways of engaging with students. And the needs that they were outlining included the fact that they wanted the activities that students would engage with to be iterative, not one and done, but within such activities, they would be able to engage with each other multiple times before reaching uh, some sort of final result of the product. Also, the instructors hoped that students would engage a little bit more deeply with the standards and the requirements of uh, the final assessments through such formative activities. Uh, they would better understand uh, the rubrics that were provided to reach better learning outcomes. Additionally, to create that lasting engagement, they, uh, the instructors were looking for ways to help students connect with each other and learn from each other's work. Additionally, allow room for reflection. So now that's actually a lot of different components. And now if thinking about how a learning management system, specifically in our case, Canvas can scale such activities within the interface for courses of uh, 500, 800 students, that can pose uh, quite considerable challenges, which we were able to address by using the Feedback Fruits platform. Uh, so we prior evaluated multiple platforms, and it seemed to us that Feedback Fruits met most of the requirements, both nice-to-haves and must-haves. And with the help of that platform, we were able to identify a couple of scenarios that would fit this need of lasting engagement with students. The first scenario is a peer review scenario, within which students would submit their work, their draft work, perhaps complete self-assessment based on a rubric that was provided by the instructor. Uh, they would each then provide anonymous feedback for two other peers. And finally, they would read the feedback that they received from their peers and reflect on that feedback. So now this scenario was quite popular in courses that had to do with languages in such classes as first year writing seminars, in also nutritional sciences, generally arts and sciences, in our undergraduate 
graduate programs. Another scenario, the second scenario, was based for group members to evaluate each other. So these group members would usually work um, in small groups on team projects, and these teams would uh, first of all, co-create a contract that would identify the roles that students are to fulfill within these teams. Moving along, teams members would give feedback to peers by responding the evaluation questions. And a lot of times these evaluation questions would actually revolve around whether each individual member of the team fulfills those roles outlined in the contract. So this activity was very popular in such programs as uh, engineering, communication, business and hotel management, economics, uh, and many others. So having run through the pilot and just generally having worked with multiple instructors on implementing these activities within feedback routes, uh, we were able to come up with a number of best practices. So it took us about one semester to just um, outline uh, what was working really well and how to better support such activities. Uh, one of them is clearly and uh, specifically outline what the outcomes and expectations are. Uh, uh, which we did in consultation with faculty by understanding the learning objectives of the course as a whole and the learning objectives of the activity at hand. Another one is a well-designed rubric. Well-designed comprehensive rubric goals really are a way to help students understand how they can give feedback to each other, but also what are the guidelines uh, that they can think about as they're thinking of improving their own work. Another one is uh, providing clear instructions for students on how to uh, go through the activity and what they can expect at each step. Like I said before, these activities are iterative. They are not one and done. Students go through, uh, they have to go uh, together through a number of stages of the activity, and they really have to follow those deadlines to make the activity a success because they're not submitting it on their own. They're collaborating with others. And another thing that uh, is really great to think about is allowing time for comprehensive engagement, meaning that between the steps of the activity, there needs to be enough time for students to be able to engage with each other and not feel rushed. And uh, one other thing that we've learned from uh, the experience of our instructors is implementing too many of such activities actually will be bringing diminishing returns and uh, noticing that students would not engage as thoroughly and as deeply with the activities if they feel like it's busy work. And the final one was uh, guidance on what's actually quality feedback. Uh, we've received quite uh, a bit of feedback from students throughout the pilot, answering the question essentially whether they thought that peer review or group member evaluation activity that they completed within feedback routes was helpful for their learning. In some cases, they were answering that it was not as helpful as it could have been just because they felt like they were receiving superficial feedback. So that led us to the question uh, uh, whether students actually are equipped with feedback skills. And by in, in our conversations with other instructors, we found that some sort of support or guidance or training, coaching that is provided to students would be really helpful and would increase the engagement with the activity and would help students to take this activity more seriously. So what we did on our end um, in the Center for Teaching Innovation, we created an onboarding peer review activity that I will show you just in a second. Uh, within this uh, onboarding peer review activity, students would try at a lower stake, uh, in a lower stake activity, following all of the steps of, let's say, peer review or group member evaluation, but also they would receive the guidance from the instructor on specifically what are the strategies that they need to be thinking as they give feedback to each other. Uh, so this onboarding uh, peer review activity uh, was made available in Canvas Commons. Uh, so any of the instructors at Cornell can um, just look it up and import it directly into their course. The mini module that we created includes classroom instructions with simple strategy slides that uh, the instructors can either reuse or redesign to fit their needs. And it also includes instructions on how to modify the activity itself. So here I will just pause for a second and show you what it looks like first in the Canvas Commons. So that right here, um, you can see that the activity is available. And by just clicking on one button, instructors can import it into their course. 
And here is a sample of what it looked like in Canvas, in our view. Now, I will not be expanding some of these options to just not reveal the names of the students in this course, but you can see that just picking, kind of bringing it back to the scaling and making um, such activities available for large classes, instructors can access a multiple data about how students engage through uh, by downloading a, a spreadsheet that includes all of the comments the students provided to each other, all of the scores, which is super helpful. And many instructors at Cornell point that out, that they really appreciate this feature. Another thing that um, instructors appreciate is the fact that all of the steps are outlined and uh, students seem to not ask many questions about how to navigate the platform and an activity overall. So that kind of lifts that burden from the instructor. And like I, I've mentioned before, this activity in particular, uh, we work, we tried to work really hard to uh, outline the steps and the instructions very clearly uh, so that students can follow them without uh, very many questions. And then the instructor can not only see the metrics and how the, the students engage with the activity, but also they can set up the other grading that will specify how the students or what are the steps the students are receiving the grades for. So that makes it an easy process for the instructors to follow to implement these activities. Of course, there is a little bit of a learning curve at the beginning, but um, after a couple of sessions of setting up the, such activities together, uh, they seem to be on their own way. Uh, so now that I've given some examples of activities that we've created to support the feedback literacy skills of the students, I just wanted to bring it back to my original point of creating lasting engagement for student learning. And uh, these specific use cases were especially helpful for us because uh, they allowed us to engage with the faculty and talk uh, more in depth about the learning outcomes and the expectation of the course and really think uh, critically about the ways that peer review or group member evaluation activities could support that lasting engagement. And um, by following those iterative steps of the process of following and of completing an activity, let's say peer review or group member evaluations, which included giving feedback, receiving feedback, reflecting on feedback. Many students uh, pointed out that the skills that they've gained and specifically the feedback literacy skills that they've gained through such activities, they were able to take with them into other courses and even beyond the classroom. So that completes my presentation. Thank you. Xenia, thank you so much for your elaborate presentation. And it's always wonderful to hear success stories from someone else. But with that being said, I would like to hand it over to another success story, that of Easton Nazarin College, where Melinda Smith and Bill McCoy will take you through their digital transformation efforts over the past years with Feedback Fruits and hoping that everybody will like it. Thank you. Thanks for that introduction, Max. And hello, InstructureCon. My name is Bill McCoy. I'm the Vice President of Academic Affairs at Eastern Nazarene College. And uh, here today, along with my colleague, uh, Mindy Smith, our Director of Curriculum Development, it's my pleasure to share with you a little bit about ENC's work with Feedback Fruits over the last three years. ENC is a small four-year liberal arts college located in Quincy, Massachusetts, just on the south side of the city of Boston. We have a highly diverse uh, student population with uh, slightly over half of our population coming from underrepresented minority groups and a wide range of uh, educational and socioeconomic backgrounds. As a, as a Christian college, uh, denominationally affiliated, we see education as a means for transformation for our individual student in terms of their internal lives, but also as people of faith moving out into a broader community in the world, seeking to transform it for its betterment. In 2019, when our partnership with Feedback Fruits started, we were effectively a traditional classroom-based institution. So whether we were talking about our traditional undergraduates or our adult studies and graduate student populations, uh, but we knew that we were late to the game, really, and needed to make a pivot in a pretty dramatic fashion towards hybrid and online instructional models. And so we were looking for accelerants that would help us pursue that goal. 
So it was in we, the midst of those conversations, uh, it was actually a faculty member who was participating in our faculty development course, who first identified Feedback Fruits and its peer review tool as a, an interesting one for us to explore. And that opened up conversations uh, between faculty and the administration and the representatives, including Max, from Feedback Fruits, which led to, over the course of uh, three to four months, uh, multiple demos for faculty, uh, including our adjunct and our instructional support staff, trying to get people to, to get a sense of or a little bit of a, a vision for what this toolkit could do for us. And then eventually was uh, presented to the administration and approved by cabinet. And that allowed us to launch our partnership in January of 2020, during which Although, as I mentioned, we were primarily looking at the peer review and group evaluation tools as being primarily of interest during that pilot, we had access to the complete suite of tools offered by Feedback Fruits. And as it turned out, that was an enormously good thing for us and perfectly timed. And to tell you a little bit more about sort of what happened in that process, I'm going to turn things over to Mendy Smith. So we knew going into the development of online programming that there were several problems that we were seeking to find solutions for. So at that point, several faculty had already started supplementing their face-to-face -face courses with free online tools or publisher content platforms. And so this opened up a, a large range of possible activities, but students were often confused and frustrated with those tools. So they had issues with needing to register on these other sites. They had issues with the access codes or clunky transitions between Canvas and the tools. And so students and faculty alike felt that they spent almost as much time dealing with each new tool as they spent on the course itself. And so it was in that atmosphere, again, that we started to roll out the fully online programming. So we didn't want to exacerbate the problems we were already facing by taking a piecemeal approach to the, the new tools that we decided to adopt for online courses. So we definitely wanted to explore suites of tools that would give students a really seamless, familiar interface that they would experience from one course to the next and from one tool to the next. Similarly, uh, since we were late to the online learning game, as, as Bill mentioned, we were also committed to finding a really high touch interactive approach that would help to maintain our overall ethos and translate the best of our face-to-face -face classroom practices into the online learning environment. So just like the face-to-face -face classes, we wanted to see multiple types of close interactions that happen online among classmates, with the faculty member, and with the course content. And then finally, as a really small institution, we don't have the resources to be able to roll out new things and just hope that faculty are going to try them out and adopt them. So in our reality of use it or lose it, we knew that our selections had to be super strategic so that they'd receive widespread use through all academic divisions and modalities. So therefore, in searching for the appropriate tools, we also looked for tools that would be super adaptable across multiple disciplines and teaching styles that they would both augment the existing practices in face-to-face -face classes, as well as create high quality, engaging learning experiences in the online classes. And then finally, that it would be manageable for our really small staff of instructional designers and technologists to be able to handle the administration and the, the training and the troubleshooting. And at that time, this list of criteria seems really impossible to reconcile. That was, that was what we felt then too. So as Bill intimated, uh, one of our faculty members encountered Feedback Fruits and recommended that we explore their products. And so we, we didn't actually have to do the prioritizing and the negotiating on this list of criteria. So we started with our online task force group and then invited more and more faculty to participate in the meetings and the demos. And so by the time that we adopted uh, Feedback Fruits, we had a really wide cross-section of faculties, 
and other uh, other instructional staff that had determined that the Feedback Fruits tool suite fulfilled all of our criteria and would be the best option for our needs. So even though, as Bill mentioned, we were initially most interested in the peer review and group member evaluation tools, since those were the, the needs that were expressed in face-to-face classes, Feedback Fruits offered us the opportunity to pilot the whole suite throughout spring of 2020, which turned out to be a absolutely fortuitous circumstance for us. So in March 2020, ENC, along with the other schools of the Eastern Coast, made the huge pivot that we're all tired of hearing about into remote learning due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So faculty had two days notice in which they had to revamp their courses for online or remote instruction. And the tools that may have seemed sort of, oh, that's interesting to faculty in the fall, uh, they suddenly became crucially important uh, for helping them to create engaging learning opportunities and therefore some semblance of normalcy for the students whose plans and lives became so disrupted. So the group of interactive study materials, the interactive document, interactive video, interactive presentation. Those quickly became the clear preference for a large number of our faculty since those tools closely resemble a number of activities that they had already planned for their classes that semester. But we saw some interesting things develop. Some administrative areas on campus took note of what was happening in the classrooms and started using the same tools for collaborative projects while working from home. So for example, we developed asynchronous procedures for handling the business items in our faculty meetings by using the interactive document tool to help facilitate discussions. And we also transitioned some elements of our new student orientation to Canvas and then used interactive video to help make sure that our incoming students understand the information that's presented by financial aid and some of the other offices. So these statistics show the incredible response that the ENC community has had to the Feedback Fruits Partnership over the first 18 months. So you see here, faculty usage definitely took off during the start of the pandemic in uh, March 2020 for us. We had 30 teaching faculty, which may sound small to some institutions, but that represents about 75% of our full-time faculty. And then an additional 33 adjuncts or other staff that created Feedback Fruits activities. Out of those, we saw over 1,100 total activities created. And of those, about three quarters were part of that interactive study materials. So within those interactive study materials, we saw 483 student users that participated. And on average, each of those students provided over 16 comments and answered 11 questions per assignment. So that indicates a pretty high level of engagement with students with the activities that they were participating in. And so in total, across all of the tools, we had about 73% of all of our ENC Canvas users engaging in work with Feedback Fruits tools. That includes both the faculty and the students combined. That averages out to about 604 minutes per active user over that time frame. So you can see that our, our whole campus community was very involved in Feedback Fruits work, but also it allowed us to continue our necessary operations, both in the classroom and administratively during our remote work from home time period. Thanks, Mindy. So just a couple of notes here about sort of where we hope to go with Feedback Fruits from this point forward. Mindy's already sort of explained to you that there is certainly a high level of adoption and and usage, but we do hope to continue to see that grow. We hope to see continued growth in our online programs that we've been launching and that these tools will be integral to that process. We've also been making, in the context of the pandemic, some changes to the structure of our our semester for traditional undergraduate students that will favor the use of smaller assessments rather than high stakes final exams. We Basically, we've just abolished the final exam period at our institution and are encouraging faculty to think about new ways of assessing student learning that are more fully integrated into their course across the semester. So we see the tools of Feedback Fruits as as being an important asset for that. Uh, And then I think our, our last goal is really to aid faculty in training students to give more substantive feedback in, in their usage, as you would expect, we've, we've learned that in many cases, 
Students are giving incredibly thoughtful and fully engaging feedback, but there are those instances where a student is just trying to get by and, and leaves, you know, three words in their comment. And so we want to help faculty feel more comfortable how to train students in giving substantive feedback so that my hope would be that they would feel more comfortable turning over grade assessments to these interactive and peer evaluation processes. I, I would ultimately like us to get back to growing our usage of tools like group member evaluation and peer review beyond just the interactives. So these are some of the things that we are hoping to see. Again, feeling great about where we've been and uh, thankful for the partnership that we've shared with Feedback Fruits. Thanks so much for your time, everybody. Hope this has been helpful. Lynn and Bill, thank you so much for your elaborate conversation. It was a great pleasure to hear again. And with that, I would like also like to close this session. I'd like to close with basically the reasons that learning designers have indicated that they need feedback fruits, not just one, but they need it. We've listed them on the left side of the slide. I'm just going to run through them step by step. A skilled self and peer assessment, structured discussion formats, increased student engagement interaction, instant feedback on student written work with artificial intelligence, engaged annotation in faculty study material, the transition to flexible asynchronous course programs, collaborative learning strategies, enhanced reading strategy in academic reading, and not to forget synchronous learning activities because they are important. Now, to the ones that are watching the video, if you think that three of these points are relevant to your institution, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can contact us via our website, feedbackfruits.com, or you can send me a direct mail via max at feedbackfruits.com. Thank you so much for watching and have fun at the rest of the event from Instructure Club. Thank you.